How do you make millions consistently with Transmog? Let us begin. So overall, this is a full guide on how to make gold with Transmog, specifically with farming Transmog. No crafting about this. We're gonna go from the bare bone basics all the way over to getting a bit further on in depth with everything as this video progresses. That being said, let's go on to how Transmog works. Transmog sells in a manner of a few ways. It works mainly like a shop. Picture yourself having a shop. This means that you're going to be selling multiple different appearances. This is much like Transmog as we're selling multiple different appearances in order to gain sales. Say that your shop currently has a blue shirt. Now not many people want to buy a blue shirt. A few select people do want to actually buy that blue shirt. However, that will be an infrequent sale. The best way in order to actually expand your gold making potential with Transmog is by having multiple different types of, of appearances. So with this shop, we would want to have a blue, black, yellow, red, all the colors of the rainbow, different types of shirts, and maybe even some leg wear. This will actually increase sales as more people will have a more of a variety to choose from, from different types of appearances that they want to have. As some people may want to go for a pirate look, other people may want to go for the standard heroic soldier or the necrotic or overlord of the world. It really does depend on the person in particular and how their character they want to actually look like. Now, a common census when it comes towards actually selling Transmog with that analogy of just hosting a little shop is around about 1,000 items. This is just a common census overall when it comes towards selling Transmog. And though it may be one of those things that everyone says, oh, 1,000 items, but the items in particular do matter quite a bit. This is because those 1,000 items could be a load of low tier greens that you've got from Rage, Fire, Chasm, and you're just like, yeah, they'll sell, I'm gonna gain them. No, that's not how it works. Unfortunately, selling every single green is a good way in order to actually pad out your auction house is not the most viable method in order to actually increase your gold with that. Now, you can do that. You're more than welcome to do that and just fire as many shots in the dark as possible in order to gain regular sales. However, I opt for, or I would always recommend, is going for a more practical approach when actually farming up different types of items to sell in the auction house. That means like 1,000 items of anything over like 5,000 gold. That is a number that we can actually base everything off of. So when we're farming, if that's over 5,000 gold, we can hit that on like our loot appraiser and set that to the trigger method in order to actually see that actually pop up and then oh cool we got a 5000 gold item i'll stick that to the side and i can sell that on the auction house all of the other ones i could just send over to my disenchanter or i could just vendor those that being said when it comes towards your 1000 items i would highly recommend being a little bit more picky than just going anything that is a green or a blue i'm gonna sell that being said there are five dungeons that I would like to recommend for when getting started with Transmog. These ones are padding ones and can be used to get yourself started, get your foot in the door with Transmog as a whole, and they are definitely my go-tos if I ever was going to start my operation again. And starting off with our first one, Zulfarak. Now Zulfrak has a wide variety of different types of Transmog you can gain along with this. A load of the greens actually sell relatively well in the grand scheme of things as you can get things like the Jade set and the Blood Splatter set along with the Glorious Leg Plates. Now these have been dropping for some time within Zulfrak and is a nice little uptick overall for pretty much any Transmog farmer as the Glorious set is quite highly valued and unless you're on a very high dense realm where loads of people are selling them. Along with that, there are other items of note, which is the black metal cape, the spell shock leggings, brain lash, gut wrencher, blood letter, scalpel, 
the Minotaur, which is a very good one, I might hasten to add, Eye Gouger, Witch Doctor's Cane, Flame Incinerator, and Troll Protector. Now, generally, when you're actually farming this up, you want to actually farm this in a method in which you actually gather up all of the mobs. For me, I like to run this with my Druid because I can use my Dreamwalk ability to go in and out of the instance after I complete my half L shape run. You can see that on the screen right now on the path I actually take within said dungeon. This makes sense as I can gather up the most amount of my mobs and then I can just dream walk in and out and get this done in about 40 minutes. As an additional option, go do a full run around the entire zone, but I don't really recommend that as I kind of want to just get the most bang for my buck and then be gone and then in and out as fast as possible in that sense. Which brings us on to the Sunwell as for number two of our padding. This is mainly focusing on the high ticket items. You're gonna be wanting to farm up the trash mobs, not Mr. Big Boy over there, no, not Mr. Kill Jadon, but you're going to be wanting to farm up the schematics and patterns. Wait, I thought this was a transmog farm. Why are you telling me to farm patterns? Well, it's actually quite interesting because patterns can be used, um, <laughs> funnily enough, to create transmog. Now, this goes in the line of more crafted transmog, however, people will buy those schematics in order to actually create said items and then have them for their appearances, as some of those schematics have BOPs and what many people are willing to actually go farm those all up. So if you do the necessary farming for those transmog schematics and or patterns, then you'll be able to get a decent chunk for this. Generally speaking, I want to gather up the first load of the trash mob all the way up to the first boss, run out and reset the instance. This doesn't take you all that long in order to do to become locked out of this said instance and you can gain quite a high amount of valuable items. Things like the Crimson Robe have a tendency to drop from this raid and can actually provide you with a decent amount of baseline transmog to sell on the auction house as well. However, the schematics and the patterns for this one is the Annihilator Hollow gogs which I have sold like three patterns of that this year already justice bringer 3000 specs hyper magnified moon specs the wonder hill xt 68 shades the primal attuned goggles lightning attached specs sure strike goggles version 3.0 mayhem projection goggles the hard corium goggles sunfire hand wraps Hands of Eternal Light, Sunfire Robe, which is uh, one of my ones that I tend to just generally craft and sell. The Robes of Eternal Light, Some Blessed Gauntlets, Hard Corium Battle Fists, Some Blessed Breastplate, Hard Corium Battle Plate, Leather Gauntlets of the Sun, and Fletcher's gloves of the phoenix. All of these patterns tend to sell relatively well and for a decent chunk of gold. Now some of them are over farmed and have a different drop chance depending on which ones you actually have and that means that some of them are going to sell for a little bit less than the others but the high valued ones sell for a lot. There is other ones that you can actually get from this. Fell steel blacksmithing patterns which is the fell steel long blade and to be for one of instance, and pretty much all of the fell steel ones are well drops, so you can actually also get this from somewhere as well. Moving into dungeon number four, we have Dire Maul. Now, Dire Maul is my <laughs> It's my all-time favourite one because I love it so much. What you're going to be wanting to do is you're going to be wanting to jump into the instance, jump down and gather up all of the mobs. Then slay them all and dream walk in and out of the instance. If you can't do that, then just run all the way back to the instance entrance again while pulling all of the mobs and reset. It's a pretty standard goal farm in order to do. And the items of note that you actually can get from this is the Fiery War Axe, Staff of Jordan, Orphic Braces, the Elemental Remnant, the Facing Boots, which are pretty damn good, the Stone Bark Gauntlets, Unbridled Leggings, Eldelon's Talisman, and Wand of Arcane Potency. Now, Diamond is my all-time go-to because it provides you with a load of different types of herbs and or resources to go along with your transmog farm. You have loads of other different types of greens that can hit over your little threshold. Obviously we covered saying around about 5,000 gold for example, but I generally 
for me personally, I go for anything above 2,000 gold. This is just so I can expand my product range without losing any gold while I'm posting those on the auction house to make regular sales. Moving that on to RFK or Razorfan Crawl, which is a pretty dang good go-to. What you're gonna be wanting to do is go into the instance, gather up all the mobs, burn them all down. I think we're finding quite a common theme when it comes towards dungeon farming. The Staff of the Shade, Mantle of the Thieves, Wolf Claw Gloves, Avengers Armor, which is a keynote item I would highly recommend trying to get a hold of because that is pretty dang awesome. The Pulgilis Braces, Plains Ring, Vendetta, Sword of Decay, Slag Hammer, and Phasian's Old Great Sword. That one goes for a lot. Seriously, just... Yeah. <laughs> RFK is one of your go-tos, it's talked about by pretty much anyone who farms transmog and it just generally is a perfect goal farm in order to do for transmog farming to get started. Following on to our last dungeon which is BRD or Block Black Rock Depths. Black Rock Depths has an array of different types of items along with if you are bringing a miner and you're farming this up, you may want to bring your miner because there is Dark Iron Ore to be had in there which has a chance of dropping Blood of the Mountain as well which both of those two materials and resources in general can sell for a decent chunk of gold. The transmog items that you'd be wanting to actually farm up is the Battle Chaser's Greaves, the Blister Bane Wraps, Stone Shield Cloak, Funeral Pyre Vestment, Mar Alum's Grip, Brain Cage, Searing Needle, Doom Forge Straight Edge, Rib Splitter, The Judge's Gavel, and The Spire of the Stone Shaper. Now the Spire of the Stone Shaper is one that I sold recently and is, yeah, it fetched me quite a decent amount of gold, thank you very much. But to be along with that, BRD can be farmed in multiple different ways because it's so big and there's so other different types of ways in order to do it, I actually have got two routes on the screen for you right now that you can actually follow. These ones are generally either fast or slow or you can combine the both to actually increase your amount of gold done. I prefer the 20 minute run which is just literally going in and going to the left, gathering up all the mobs, burn them down and just run back out. That's because I'm a very lazy gold farmer, but over time I win big always. So it really doesn't matter in that sense. It just Go for whatever you want to go with. Honestly, if you're just getting started and you're trying to pad out your auction house with BRD, then you do the 40 minute run on average. And other than that, let's scale up. Because when it comes towards transmog, padding out your auction house is really not enough. You've got a decent amount and say you've just gathered up all of those 1000 items of high valued items to actually sell on the auction house. Now, that, that's cool, that is that is cool, well done. But uh, yeah, if you wanna increase your gold, you're gonna be wanting to go for those high ticket items. And when it comes towards high ticket items, we're talking Gnome Ragoon. Now Gnome Ragoon can actually be done relatively okay-ish. It's one of those ones that is a pain in the butt to actually farm up, but if you are willing to put up with it and farm it, regularly just by going in and burning everything down like a madman with a flamethrower who is also a shaman then you can actually get a hold of items like the hotshot pilot gloves the mech builders overalls petrol spill leggings cavern deep trudges high-tech super gun which i really wouldn't mind having one of those in real life but the vibro blade the oscillating power hammer supercharger battle axe and the gizmatron mega chopper well that would have been handy when i was chopping wood in the summer because that would have just made my life easier and my arms wouldn't have just turned to noodles. But that being said, Gnomergun is one of those high ticket ones where you're either going to come in and get nothing or you're going to come out with something good. There's really no in between. We shall call it the Marmite of Dungeons in that sense. Which brings us on to another one which we can't call Marmite but we'll just call it Bovril because I like it on toast which is Alderman. Everyone knows Alderman and Alderman can be farmed up relatively easily. All you have to do is just run all the way down 
to the last boss, gathering up all of the mobs on your way. You'll want to go into the little pocket areas and gather up the mobs from there as well, to gather up as many as you can. Once you get to the end, burn them all down, and you can gain a wide variety of different types of transmogs. Do not forget to loot the last chest behind the last boss before you reset the instance, because that has a chance of dropping some really old world, unscaled, items which can sell for some stupid amounts of gold. These items that can drop from this instance is the Pendulum of Dune, Papal Fares, Digmaster 5000, the Miner's Hat of the Deep, which I have been seeing more frequently on the auction house, so yes! The Spirewind Fetter, Adventurer's Pith Helmet, Spoulders of the Lost Age, Leggings of the Vault, Monolithic Bow, Stone Vault Shiv, Shadow Forge Bushmaster, Beacon of Hope, Digmaster 5000, Excavator's Brand, which was the very first transmog item I actually managed to obtain from Alderman when I started transmog farming back in the day. The Stone Vault Bone Breaker, Annealed Blade, Jinsu Sword, which sells for a decent chunk of gold, the Obsidian Cleaver, the Jackhammer, which, uh, yeah, if you get it, you dude, you got like gold cap. Uh, what what can I say? <laughs> the shoveler and the earthen rod. Alderman is by far one of the most keynote transmog item areas, and you're e it is literally marmite. But we are calling it Bovril. You're either gonna go in get nothing or you're going to come out with something and you can do it within around about seven minutes as I did it without a speed set the other day just to make sure that anyone doing it you can do it in a decent time that being said if you are using a speed set you can get more runs in the hour but that being said Alderman is one of the keynote ones to actually do which brings us on to our last thing when actually scaling say you're you've padded out your auction house, you've got some high ticket items on the auction house, but you don't really want to farm some dungeons. Well, I have one keynote open world gold farm, which has always been a bare bone basic one that everyone can do. This is the Silithus Cultist gold farm within huh, Silithus. Now, just be prepared that the you're all you're going to be doing is running around in a circle in the cultist base camps and just burning them down. So I would highly recommend making that your druid, if you've got a druid, or an instant cast ability, you macro it to the cultists and just call it slash tar twilight and then just spam and then just loot like a crazy person. The items of note that you can gain from this is Tibu's Basing Longsword, Glorious Leg Place, and the Stone Render Gauntlets. Those ones, those ones generally sell for a decent amount of gold and can pad out your auction house quite nicely as there is an array of different types of open world transmog items you can gain from this as well, so it's just worth your time in general. Other than that, if you're really wanting the pad out, then I would do a few hours of this, just to even get yourself started, and just skip all of the above until you've done that. You could always do it like that. Now, say you did like three hours of each one of these things that you that I've just put forward, you will definitely have a decent chunk to get you started with transmog farming, and eventually you will gain sales. As the bottom line for pretty much any form of gold making is just, is it profitable, and is it repeatable, and does it sell? Yes, 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 transmog does sell, obviously, against that little joke that everyone talks about, but given enough time, you will always gain sales as long as it is repeatable and profitable and you can just keep doing that over and over again. And it's a very simple process to understand. That's why I'm saying, that's why I like to say simple, repeatable, profitable. And yeah, it works. It's a very simple method and it just generally will give you gold in the long term instead of the short term. If you're really coming in to get mega gold within your first week with Transmog, then I would highly suggest just being a material farmer because you're not really going to get there unless you're incredibly lucky. The 
general way in order to make gold with transmog is over time and scaled. If you look at anyone who actively farms transmog or ask them, it takes a long time in order to build up your quantity, your stockpile, but as soon as you're built up and you've got regular sales coming in, you are literally going to win big with transmog. Other than that, have an awesome rest of the day. This is the conclusion to the Transmog Gold Farming Guide to Make Millions. And this is the process and methods that I would recommend and or have done to make gold with Transmog. Any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments down below. And I wish you all a very happy rest of the day. Also, I just added a load of new content towards the Patreon, so uh, check that out. Bye. Thank you.